Welcome back to Switch to Linux. There has been a discussion. Should we reinstall our entire operating system or just roll up and upgrade? This is a question I was recently asked, and so I thought we'd go ahead and go outside and talk about it a little bit. Let's see what we can come up with. So thanks for checking out this latest Switch to Linux video. And today, of course, we're going to be talking about fresh installs versus upgrade paths, and what does this mean in various Linux distributions. There's a lot of things that we can say about going into this. The first thing that we're gonna say is many Linux distributions have point releases. Other Linux distributions are called rolling releases. There's some like OpenSUSE have both. We have OpenSUSE Leap and we have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Of course, Tumbleweed, you know, you might see one of those flying around behind me at some point in time is a constantly rolling system, whereas Leap jumps version, whoop, version, whoop, version. And so we have a little bit of a balance back and forth. Debian type systems, these are more of a, uh, of a uh, system that has a point release. Ubuntu has a different approach. They have point releases roughly every six months, but every uh, fourth of those is an LTS, meaning that those ones don't change significantly from version to version, which occurs in April every even calendar year. And so there is a lot of different discrepancy. In Arch, we have what is a full rolling schedule. Once you have a system installed with Arch, there is no need, there's nothing that happens, there's no point releases. It's just that every single upgrade is just constantly rolling and rolling and rolling like a giant snowball. So we did the video recently on upgrading Cubes. Now Cubes recommends that you do a fresh install, although they have a way to make a backup of your various Cubes. And of course you back up your data, you back up all your Cube information, you wipe your disk, you reinstall Cubes, and then you add your backup configurations back in and that will get you a better system than the, the upgrade path, which as we did the upgrade path, it upgraded everything around our core templates, but our core templates are still old. Yes, the video is coming upgrading those down the road. Now, some things like Fedora and Mint and Ubuntu, they're very easy to upgrade because the GUI tools they give you have the ability to do the upgrade. Linux Mint, you will get an upgrade in their update manager. So, of course, oftentimes when you boot up Linux Mint, they'll say, hey, there's an upgrade to the upgrade manager. You get that first and then you get the rest of the upgrades. Well, we're gonna see that coming out soon if it's not already there because 21.3 has just been released. And so what happens here is you'll get that update there and there'll be a menu option to do a full system upgrade. So you have that and you can install a, a, a terminal tool to do that as well. Fedora, the GNOME software will alert you there's a new Fedora version. You can click the button and, and roll it. Ubuntu has a similar feature in theirs. And theirs you have to be more careful if you're trying to stay on the LTSs. Inside of the software sources, there is the option, do you want to do just LTS? Do you want to do each point release? Do you want to do experimental? So you have to beware of which one you're on and make sure that you're on the right path that you want. Arch, there's no need. Just upgrade the system and there are no point releases in Arch. Debian is one of the more difficult because it does require some manual overgrading. I've never seen an automatic Debian approach. There might be one out there, I don't know. But if you go look up how to upgrade Debian to your latest versions, you have to go into the system sources, whether in the terminal or in the GUI tools, and you have to manually make a change to the repositories in order to cause the full system upgrade. And so there's a little bit of back and forth about which direction. Now Debian, it's not, that sounds hard. It's just different. It's really not hard at all. Although if you get a typo in there, you're going to cause a few problems. Uh, it's not going to be problems as much as, yeah, we don't know what you're talking about, yo. Do that again. That's really what Debian gets you. But this brings us down to this idea. Many distributions will say, hey, it's probably better if you do a fresh install and re-upload your data. Whereas other distributions, despite most of the distributions, do provide an upgrade path, is it better to start with a fresh install or is it better to upgrade your systems? And so we're gonna talk about these. And I'm gonna look at the, the various elements here. First, we're gonna just talk about the fresh systems. So the fresh install, 
this means that you're wiping your entire system, there's nothing else, you're reinstalling the entire operating system, and then of course you just re-import your files. Of course, if you do the backup of your home, your home directory, as we talked about in our managing Linux video, you can even get your settings for your application. So there's no need to install your applications and then go through all of your setting changes again. Most of those application settings are going to be stored inside of your home folder anyway. And so it's not a huge deal to get out there and to, to re-import the data. The biggest advantage, it's going to reduce any issues that might arise from any older software that might still be there as an artifact. Uh, in my, my one Arch system, I was trying to do something fun and cutesy with uh, Plasma. So I'd installed Plasma and then I was going to install this really cool Plasma theme that was all just like dark reds and stuff like this. And so I did this and I'm like, okay, this is actually kind of annoying. Let's get rid of that. I install all that. I actually uninstall Plasma. I uninstall everything on the system that wasn't Cinnamon. And every Plasma application is still coming up with these deep reds. Like, and I could not figure out for the life of me where these issues were. It'd be way better if I just grabbed my folder, grabbed my files, wiped the whole system, reinstall it, put my files back, done with it. I end up installing a tool to manage uh, QT applications separately. So uh, that's how I solved it on my end. And so every application measures it from that. But what ends up happening now is there's some weird plasma cute stuff in the system somewhere that I don't know where it is. It's probably in their take up space. It's probably in there causing some form of conflict. It's probably needs to get out of there. Wiping the system, reinstalling fresh would take care of that. It would take care of any artifact software. Of course, I experimented with three or four different desktop environments on that computer. There's probably still artifact software. I could run a bleach bit, which would probably get rid of some of that stuff, but not all of it. And so a fresh install is really good for saying, I'm gonna take all of this stuff out. Let's wipe out everything. We're getting a brand new clean slate. There's not going to be anything that conflicts. Everything is going to work. And then simply adding your files back in. Now you have a good functional working system. And of course, if you imported your application settings as well, wouldn't be a problem. Email, no problem. Every major email client. Okay, I can't say every major. I haven't used every major. Thunderbird and Evolution allow you to take a backup, export your data, re-import it in. Those are the two clients I use. It works great. I've actually used it for building new laptops, just porting my good functional email from the old system into the new one. Evolution is more secure. It does require you to add your passwords back in on the first boot and it saves your passwords to the keychain of the computer. Whereas Thunderbird seems to save it somewhere in the configuration files, which means if somebody gets a hold of the files in your home folder, they probably can gain access to your email passwords. It's very interesting uh, to think about. Now that is the fresh install. Let's talk about why you might not want to do a fresh install and use an upgrade path instead. Well, the first big issue is there are a lot of applications you've done, you've done a lot of changes, you've, you have a lot of files, you don't wanna mess with all the backup stuff, and it takes a lot longer to do a full comprehensive backup, verify your backup, wipe your drive, install your new system, and then tweak with 100 different settings that you forgot you tweaked three or four years ago when you set up your computer, and then drop all of your files back on. It becomes radically inconvenient. It carries with, of course, the downside of all of that aforementioned garbage that still could be left over from other applications we've installed and removed, other settings we tweaked with and couldn't be able to untweak, all that kind of stuff remains there as well. And so if you have any issues from your old system settings, from your old platform, during an upgrade, they are gonna carry through. Additionally, there may very well be some older applications out there that are carrying with it some package conflicts. You might have a dependency that didn't upgrade, they didn't anticipate it being there, and it causes some form of conflict. Whereas if you wipe the system and then reinstall the package, it needs a dependency. You're gonna get a little bit cleaner of a build by doing that. And so overall, I don't think there isn't a solid answer. Is it best to wipe out and install fresh or is it better just do an upgrade? a system upgrade, whether it be a rolling release like Arch, should we every maybe two years on Arch wipe our system and reinstall it? I don't know, maybe. 
should we, every time there's a new version, maybe on Linux Mint, if it's your distro, maybe every .0 release you want to switch to, you wipe that out and then you just upgrade to the point releases. I mean, you know, there's no one solid answer. Hopefully this video, though, gave you the ideas as to why you might switch to one and not switch to the other, and also what we might be talking about with our introduction, talking about the, the various types of models of distribution rolling. So there is the answer to that question. Hopefully that was a good answer. Let me know uh, other questions that we have in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that notification bell. Give us a like on the video and we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.